What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back here again with another video. So we're gonna check out ten WWE superstars Triple H selfishly buried. Man, now Triple H in this day has definitely buried some talent. Um, did some backstage politicking. Um, the most noticeable one I know for a fact um, is uh, Booker T. His feud with Booker T. They company was going behind him. I don't know what happened, but you would think he was gonna, you know, become the world heavyweight champion, and he never did. Like they, in my in my opinion, it it, it was one of those things where it's like they're they're pulling this race angle, and you're thinking they're gonna give the guy the win at WrestleMania, and no, he loses. And like, in my opinion, that's a burial because you built this guy up you talked down to his character and what he is he maybe had a few highlights and then when he gets to the match he just gets buried you know what i'm saying and, and i i that's one feud i never really understood why they would go that far of going with the race race issue to not put him over so that's one of the times i can i can think offhand of someone getting buried granted Booker T was still able to overcome it, especially when he went to SmackDown and became uh, became the champion when he was doing the King Booker gimmick. He was able to overcome it, but in the end, but at that time, you know what I'm saying? People were cheering for him. People were going for him, and I don't know what happened. So we're going to check this out. Appreciate all the love and support. I'm wondering if that, uh, that feud is on their list, and let's see what happens. Now, Triple H is one of the most controversial superstars in WWE history. And throughout the years, there have been a number of high-profile matches which Triple H should have actually lost, but ended up winning. Uh -huh. And most of the time, this involved a former WWE champion using his backstage power to manipulate things in order for him to come out like victorious, burying the other superstar as a result. But which wrestlers were they? Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 times Triple H buried a WWE star. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Shout out to WrestleMania. Make sure y'all go subscribe to his channel. Link to the original video will be down below. All of that, all of it, life's work, almost all taken away because of one man. Sting. Number 10, Sting. Mm. When Sting faced Triple H at WrestleMania 31, fans were under the impression that Sting would be victorious. Yes. This was to be Sting's first ever WWE match, and with them booking him against Triple H, fans assumed that Sting was put against a superstar that could afford to lose. Yes. But obviously that's not what happened. Instead, Triple H defeated Sting in one of the most shocking upsets in WrestleMania history. Nobody saw it coming and it never should have happened. The build made it look like Sting was going to conquer the evil authority and yes. take down Triple H, but for whatever reason, Triple H got the victory. According to Scott Hall, when the rehearsal for the match was taking place, Hulk Hogan and Hall looked at each other in true disbelief when Triple H announced that he was going to beat Sting. Even wrestling icons and one of Triple H's personal friends knew that Triple H beating Sting was not the correct move. That doesn't... I will for always stand on this hill and die on this hill. Having Sting lose in his very first match in WWE, no one ever, and I mean ever, thought Sting would ever go to WWE. We all knew Sting was a WCW guy until it ended. It is cool to see him in AEW. But we knew he was going to be a WCW guy till it ended. And when it ended, he was still a WCW. W guy. He was never going to WWE. No one ever thought when they finally get him to WWE, put him in a high profile feud. Guess what they do? They book him to lose at WrestleMania. At what point does that make sense? That's that's no bro. That was that was dumb. Number nine, Kurt Angle. One of the top storylines on WWE television in 2000 was the storyline between Triple H, Stephanie uh -huh. McMahon, and Kurt Angle. Yeah. One of the ideas for the storyline was for Stephanie to leave Triple H for Angle. However, Triple H... See yeah, I remember that storyline. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. How many of y'all have been seeing this damn ad pop up everywhere on everyone's uh, channels? Like, I am so tired of seeing this ad. Of course, y'all gonna say, get ad blocker, but... 
I'm just saying, bro. They can come up with better ads. It's the same damn, hello, Google Fi. We get it. They're trying to promote Google Fi. Great, this is a Google product. Google owns YouTube, but Jesus Christ. Idea. The video. He claimed that this was an unbelievable storyline. The angle came to an abrupt end when the Triple H defeated Angle at the 2000 Unforgiven pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. Following the Unforgiven pay-per-view, WWE made plans for Angle to move into the main event scene. He was booked to defeat The Rock at No Mercy and win his first WWE title. A Triple H who was sitting in creative meetings during this time period suggested that nobody would take Angle seriously as a legitimate world champion. H simply believed that Angle was too small. This was wow. when legendary wrestler Gerald Briscoe defended Angle and suggested that Triple H wouldn't win a real life fight against Angle. This quickly put Triple H in his place and he went silent on the subject matter. Wow, bro. Triple H was a legit asshole back then, bro. Damn, that's, that's cold, bro. Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder was incredibly over in 2011. Shout out to Zack Ryder getting himself over on YouTube. Thanks mainly to the success of his YouTube series, there was a clear desire from WWE fans to see Ryder receive a huge push. Uh -huh. Now, although not directly taking place in a match, Triple H was involved in a segment that seriously buried Ryder and it took place for seemingly no reason at all. In the now infamous segment, Triple H executed a pedigree on Ryder. The worst thing about this was that the segment was distributed via YouTube and social media, and these were the platforms that Ryder was insanely popular on. It was just Triple H trying to make himself look like the biggest star, and this was a segment which didn't need to happen. Number 7, nice D'Lo Brown. Oh, it's damn. a common perception that Triple H only began to bury superstars once he was involved with the McMahon family. But this wasn't the case, and there were a number of stories of Triple H using whatever backstage influence he had, even before he met Stephanie McMahon. According to former head writer Vince Russo, Triple H outright refused to put over D'Lo Brown during the Attitude Era. D'Lo is considered to be one of the most underrated superstars <laughs> in the WWE. Hey, can we acknowledge D'Lo Brown's head boot? That's the greatest walk next to Vince McMahon's walk in WWE history. Don't at me, bro. Do this. Ugh. Man, D'Lo Brown was killing that walk. WWE and D'Lo defeating Triple H would have been, according to Russo, huge for his career. This is what Russo had to say in relation to Triple H burying the former Intercontinental Champion. So, you know, bro, then then we were making DX and, you know, I mean, we wrote great, great stuff for them. And then they were in an angle with the uh, Nation. And I remember one night at Raw, bro, like, Triple H refused to put D'Lo Brown over. And now, bro, first of all, if you know D'Lo, bro, he's the nicest guy in the world. I could understand, oh, I don't want to put the guy over, he's a prick, he's, no. D'Lo's the nicest guy in the world, and all of a sudden, Triple H didn't want to put him over, and I, and, and I remember turning to him and saying, bro, the guy put you over like 10 times. <laughs> yeah. Like, now it's time for you to put him over, but... I remember, bro, because like from that moment on, I really looked at Triple H a little differently. Mm -hmm. It was almost like D'Lo was beneath him. That's cold, bro. I, I, I hope, granted, I, I'm pretty sure Triple H doesn't have that mentality now, you know what I'm saying? But back then, that that's that's ego play at its finest. That's, that's kind of messed up, bro, to be honest with you. Him. And not not in my eyes, he wasn't. Number six, Randy Orton. A SummerSlam 2004 featured Randy Orton becoming the youngest ever world champion in WWE history. On the night after SummerSlam, Orton would be kicked out of the Evolution stable and a mm -hmm. babyface world title run for Orton was about to begin. Sadly, at the next pay-per-view, Triple H defeated Orton to yep. end his title run. This premature title loss ultimately hurt Orton's credibility as a babyface, and his babyface character was now on borrowed time. Now, a reason to why this occurred, well, there have been a number of rumors throughout the years. One rumor is that Triple H believed that the WWE needed a heel world champion for Taboo Tuesday pay-per-view in October of that year. This was a pay-per-view which involved fans voting for matches and opponents, and he believed that having a villainous world champion would make fans take interest in the pay-per-view. Another rumor was that Orton simply wasn't ready and WWE management and Triple H himself decided that Orton needed to drop the world title as soon as possible. Now this rumor makes little sense as Orton stayed in the title hunt for the next few months, suggesting that this wasn't the issue. 
Whatever the case, there was no reason for Triple H to defeat Orton just 28 days after Orton ascended to... I never understood that too. I never understood that. Like, why have this guy who's now getting a baby face push, he's the youngest world champion at the time, he's obviously the next guy up in the company, and you only have him hold the title for one month to only drop it back, to drop it to you. Like, yo, that... Once again, I, I never understood that watching it when it happened. To the top of the WWE ladder. Number five, Scott Steiner. Oh, yeah, I know. The two pay per view matches yeah. between Triple H and Scott Steiner are considered to be two of the worst pay per view matches of the Ruthless Aggression era. Yeah. The two men simply didn't click, and the matches were truly awful. When Steiner first reappeared in WWE, he was super popular with fans. Mm -hmm. At the time that he and Triple H had finished their rivalry, he was barely getting any reaction at all. Yeah, that. The minute you drive a new car off the lot, you start that losing. That felt flat. Right? But when Quickly. Those matches so were not good at all. At all. According to Steiner, Triple H had a habit of burying WCW stars during this time, and Steiner in the past has made rather crude comments in relation to Triple H's behavior. Steiner also claims that during their two pay per view matches, Triple H would deliberately make Steiner look as bad as possible in order for Steiner to fall out of favor with WWE management. If this was Triple H's aim, it certainly worked as the yeah, feud with Triple H was so universally panned that Steiner was left off the WrestleMania 19 match card completely. Number 4, Goldberg. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of former WCW stars who it Triple H sense. buried during his career, Goldberg is perhaps the best example of a WCW star who Triple H took issue with. When Goldberg joined the WWE back in 2003, he was pushed to the moon. Ooh, he yes defeated he was. the Rocket Backlash 2003, and he looked set to capture the world title from Triple H at SummerSlam. Goldberg vs. Triple H was the planned match, but that was until Triple H suffered <laughs> a groin injury, which forced WWE to shovel. change the match to an elimination chamber. Nevertheless, Goldberg still should have won, but it never happened. Triple H pinned him in the Elimination Chamber to retain the world title, and even worse, after the match, Evolution handcuffed Goldberg and began to attack him with a sledgehammer. Yeah. The storyline was truly awful, and it completely yeah. ruined his run in WWE. It did. Goldberg failed to defeat an injured man, and WWE quickly realized how poor this booking was. Goldberg would eventually win the world title from Triple H at next month's Unforgiven pay-per-view, but sadly, the damage was already done. Number 3, RV... Goldberg should have won that elimination chamber. You know what Goldberg is. People know what Goldberg is. If you watch WCW, you knew this guy is a dominant individual that kicks people ass, wins championships, and hold it until someone can defeat him. They knew this. And they still didn't put him over when they should have put him over. And when he did have the title, he didn't even have it long. I'm just like, yo, bro. This, this was when... Raw was just ran by Evolution and Triple H, bro. That's literally what it was. They got to talk about the Booker T situation because this was right around that time as well. VD. In the summer of 2002, WWE made plans to make RVD the first ever world champion on the Raw brand. The plan, according to former WWE writer Seth Mates, was for RVD to defeat Triple H to become the first champion. He was even considered to main event the following year's WrestleMania in a title versus title match against WWE Champion Brock Lesnar, but neither of these ideas came to mm. fruition. Instead, they decided to simply hand Triple H the world title on Raw, and uh -huh. then he would defeat RVD at the 2002 pay-per-view, and RVD would just move down the card. Now, it's actually Triple H who was highly influential in getting RVD's title plans cancelled. Wow. The story goes that RVD didn't want Triple H's help with his promo skills, and before you knew it, he was moved down the card and he would have... Wow. <laughs> so he doesn't want your help with his promo skills, and <laughs> you push him, you do some politicking and get him pushed down the card. To wait that four sucks. years before he would finally capture the world title in WWE. That Number sucks. two, CM Punk. Oh, the animosity yeah. between Punk and Triple H is well documented at this stage, but it all began in 2011. Punk in the summer of 2011 uh -huh. was the hottest thing in WWE, and when he was booked to face Triple H at the Night of Champions pay-per-view, fans believed that Punk should have been victorious, yeah. but this didn't happen. Instead, Triple H once again defeated a superstar he simply didn't need to. Everyone knew how wrong this decision was, and it seriously impacted Punk's momentum moving forward. A Punk has been rather public in his opinions that Triple H buried him in their match, and he still holds a lot of ill will towards Triple H to this very day. And number one. I knew it! Booker T was going to be number one. Knew Booker T was going to be number one. Like I said, that's, oh man, that's the one feud I definitely did not like. 
but we'll get to it later. But yeah, well, I don't. I never understood why he lost to Triple H. What was the point? He's the hottest guy in the company, and you have him losing to you that's not actively wrestling like that. That was just backstage politicking. It did nothing except hurt CM Punk. Didn't like that. One Booker T. A WrestleMania 19 feature oh, Booker T taking on Triple H for the world title. On paper, this sounds like a great world title yeah. match for WrestleMania. However, the build and the match outcome made it one of the most controversial storylines yes. in history. During the build, Triple H would verbally bury Booker T in any way he could, and he would even make racially suggestive comments towards yes. the former WCW champion. The comments were so bad in nature that it was clear that WWE were going to have Booker T beat Triple H for the world title. That's what I said. I'm like, bro, the way they're saying this, he's making racial comments. He has to win this match. They're booking it like he's going to win it. Like, what? He's going to overcome the odds. He's going to be the champ. People like Booker T. They didn't care because he was black. They liked his in-ring work. They liked him as a character. That's what people wanted to see. And guess what happened? Title. Well, that was what the fans thought, but instead Triple H defeated Booker T, and to make things worse, Triple H waited around 30 seconds before making the final cover. The entire feud made Booker T look like one of the weakest guys on the roster, and it took some time for Booker T to regain his credibility, uh -huh. and this was all due to the actions of one Triple H. But there you have it folks, 10 times Triple H buried a WWE star. No, Triple H definitely has buried some some individuals. That's the most noticeable one I can think of offhand. Uh, but yeah, I, I do feel like he's in a better place. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he he has that mentality. You saw what you you saw what he did with NXT. You saw the people he was getting over. They weren't traditional wrestlers, you know what I'm saying? Like you know the mold of a traditional wrestler they weren't like huge and massive they they were the smaller size but they were technically sound and technically you know you know advanced and they loved their craft so i do like what we have in triple h now and how he he did things with nxt when he was over nxt but back in the day evolution era oh triple h if it wasn't triple h it wasn't nothing, bro. Simple as that. If Triple H didn't feel like you deserved to be the champ, that was that was literally pretty much it. And it, it kind of sucked because it really hampered a lot of people's star power when they could have when they were hot and the momentum was on their side. Comment down below. And let me know if you guys enjoyed this video, man. Appreciate all the love and support. Road to 60k. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.